Look at that! What is that perfectly shaped ice circle doing in the middle of the river? How did it even appear there? For such a circle to form, the conditions must be very peculiar. So let's see if you can make a similar ice formation at home. Ice circles are also called ice disks and ice pans. They form in rivers, lakes, and creeks when ice gathers in the center of the body of water moved by an eddy. The thing is, random eddies tend to follow circular routes. And in the winter, ice crystals often gather in such slow-moving waters. As a result, they form circular disks of ice. The current doesn't let these disks move away, it just slowly rotates them in one place. As an ice circle turns, it hits other chunks of ice or the shore and gets lathed down until it's perfectly round. There's another way for ice circles to form. When a body of water gets covered with ice, a current traveling underneath might break off a chunk of ice and start rotating it until it's shaped like a circle. These disks can be really large, up to 50 feet across. Another amazing ice phenomenon is called penitentes. These are snow formations found at very high altitudes. Numerous and closely spaced, they look like long, thin blades of hardened snow or ice that point towards the sun. These icy spires grow over snow-covered and glaciated regions in the dry Andes at a height of more than 13,000 feet. Some penitentes are just several inches tall, while others reach 16 feet. That's around three human heights. Such jagged structures form due to the process called sublimation. It's a bit similar to melting, but in this case, the sun turns the snow directly into vapor without melting it first. In other words, the ice skips the liquid stage and goes from its solid form to gas. Curved areas of the surface heat up and sublimate faster than others, forming dents. That's how penitentes get formed, and that's why they lean in the direction of the sun's rays. Now, this is called rabbit ice. And isn't it cute? This phenomenon has other names too. Ice flowers, ice wool, ice ribbon. Pick whatever you like. I'll stick to rabbit ice. It forms when the air has cooled down to freezing temperatures. But the ground hasn't frozen yet. Sap in the plant stems expands while freezing, and it causes cracks along the stem. What happens next is water gets drawn out through these cracks. It freezes once it comes in contact with the air. This process forms super thin layers of ice, creating something that resembles ribbons or petals of ice. The same phenomenon happens with woody plants. But in this case, the ice is even thinner, more hair-like. These ice formations are incredibly delicate, so if you want to see rabbit ice, look for it in the early morning in shaded areas. You can find frost flowers floating on the surface of a newly frozen lake or sea. In 2009, a team of scientists from the University of Washington was sailing near the North Pole. That's when they discovered a large field of these pretty ice formations. But the best thing was that when they melted a few of these blossoms, they noticed that the water contained an unusually large number of bacteria. But how do these amazing ice formations appear? The air must be extremely cold, colder than the surface of the ocean, and very dry. When the air is so different from the ocean, its dryness pulls some moisture out of the water. The air gets humid, but just for a while. The cold makes the water vapor heavy. No wonder the air wants to get rid of this additional weight. So, crystal by crystal, the air turns back into ice, creating delicate flowers, sometimes reaching up to three inches in height. The ocean literally blossoms. Needle ice also has many names, and the most creative of them are frost columns, ice fringes, and ice castles. This type of ice occurs in a similar way to rabbit ice, but the water gets drawn out from the soil surface through narrow capillaries. All this water freezes in needle-like columns. At first sight, these formations look like baled hay, but made out of snow. And actually, it's quite an accurate description. You know how hay gets rolled up into large balls? Well, the same way snow rollers form. The wind blows a chunk of snow along the ground. As it rolls, it picks up even more snow, growing in size. Snow rollers are usually cylindrical and hollow inside because the very first layer of snow often flakes away as the roller moves. These snow formations can get up to two feet in diameter. They occur when the temperatures are near melting and there is a fresh layer of fluffy snow on the ground. Oh, and it shouldn't stick to the surface it lies on. 
Don't forget about the width, either. It should be strong enough to make the roller, well, roll, but not too strong to break it apart. These conditions sound rather precise. That's why snow rollers are so rare. But it's not only ice that creates amazingly beautiful things. Fire can do it too. Look at Pele's hair. These thin threads may look golden and pretty, but they're very dangerous to pick up. The wind sometimes catches small droplets of lava coming from active volcanoes. These droplets get carried miles away from the vent and are stretched into super thin glass wires, also called hair lava. Some strands can be as long as six feet. Have you warmed up yet? Then it's time to cool down again. On March 19, 2018, the inhabitants of Alabama had to run for their lives not to be hit by huge chunks of ice falling from the sky. It was the infamous hailstorm of Alabama which caused millions of dollars worth of damage. After the hailstorm, it looked as if the place had been thoroughly trashed by savages, broken shop windows, smashed car windshields, broken billboards, and holes in roofs. But what made researchers really excited was a hailstone found near the town of Cullman, Alabama. This softball-sized monster was more than five inches across and thus set a new state record. Now, look at these pretty bubbles. They're pockets of highly flammable and combustible methane gas. Trapped underwater, this gas forms psychedelic landscapes and stunning patterns. Typical for northern latitude lakes, such as Lake Abraham in Alberta, Canada, these bubbles appear when animal remains, leaves, and plants fall into the water and get consumed by bacteria. These bacteria later excrete methane gas. But don't fall for the beauty of this phenomenon. When spring comes, the ice melts and the methane bubbles start to fizz and pop in a most amazing fashion. But if you happen to light a fire in the area, everything may go boom! Imagine surfing a perfect wave when it suddenly freezes. Well, it sure sounds creepy. Luckily, such things don't happen in life, right? Wrong. You can see mind-boggling frozen waves in Antarctica. These waves occur when the ice gets compressed and the ever-increasing pressure squeezes the air bubbles out of it. As for the beautiful blue color, it's the result of the ice melting and refreezing. And a bonus for you, frozen Niagara Falls. In 2018, the legendary waterfalls, located at the border between New York State and Ontario, Canada, managed to shock everyone into silence. Tourists who arrived to admire the power of the roaring water were astonished to find Niagara Falls frozen. Jumping ahead of myself, the waterfalls weren't frozen per se, since such a feat is impossible for a mass of flowing water that huge, but microscopic water droplets that got airborne off Niagara Falls as well as the mist, formed a crust of ice over the rushing water. As a result, you could be looking at the waterfalls and be sure that they were frozen. In reality, the water kept flowing, but it was hidden beneath the ice. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.